and amen. We are doing our teaching. We're going to continue our teaching. This might be the last teaching on this particular subject. Amen. And we really have to be have to renew our mind to this particular doctrine, this teaching. Amen. And I share with you our foundational scripture. Which is number one is Isaiah 65, verse 16. Bless yourself. Amen. It says that he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. How many know you can bless yourself? Amen. You, you operate in truth. You can bless yourself. You don't have to go look for somebody to bless you. Amen. Bless yourself. Amen. Bless me, Lord. Bless No, no. Bless yourself. Amen. Praise God. Know who you are. Know who you are. You can bless yourself. Praise God. You have been created in the image of God. God, God has given you dominion. Praise God. We have been doing a study here on royalty. Royalty. I think this is about the eighth or ninth teaching. Um, I think this is the last one. Praise God. That's the last one. And the Bible says, as the man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. As the man thinketh in the heart, so is he. Amen. And the Bible also says that we have we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We're no more just normal people. Praise God. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, our foundational scripture, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, you are a what? Royal priesthood. Praise God. Royal. We're not just a priesthood, but we are a royal priesthood. That word royal it comes from the Greek word basileia, which means king. We're kings. We're royalty. Amen. Even in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, look, look what John says. John says, and he has made us what? Kings and priests. Kings. We are royalty. Amen. Remember now, as a man thinketh, so is he. He has made us royalty. We are royalty. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. And has made us unto our God and priests. Made unto us. Has made us unto our God kings and priests. There again, he says, that's the third time. Amen. Praise God. And look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords. And king, capital K, of kings. We are the small K. We are kings and priests. Amen. This is how we should think. Amen. We are on this earth. And when we accept Jesus Christ, we become royal. Amen. We become royal. How we think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. And I like to say it like this. As a man thinketh in his heart, is how he's going to see. <laughs> How you think that's how you're going to see. Amen. Have you ever talked to somebody and say, can you see that? Can you see that? Amen. It's how they're thinking. Amen. So it's how we have to think. We have to change our thinking. Once we come into the kingdom of God, we have to change our thinking. We are royalty. And one of the reasons that ignited this teaching is the Ecclesiastes chapter, I think it's chapter uh, 10, 10 verse 5. We got that scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 10. It says, yeah, he says, this is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. He said, this is an evil. I'm going to tell you, it's evil. Verse 6, he says, folly is set in great dignity and the rich set in low place. He says, fools set high and the rich people set low. He says, that's evil. That's that one. He says, I have seen service upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. And I shared to you before, servants can't afford horses back in that time. Amen. He says, servants was on the horse or riding Lexus <laughs> and princes was walking or riding bicycles. Are you following me? 
I want to break it, break it back down here to Atlanta. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. We got the people who are really your princes, your royalty, but you're not living that way. Amen. But the people who don't know Jesus, they're living, they're sitting in high places. They're riding in fine cars and doing, doing great. Amen. So when I saw this all over Africa, God put it by spirit to do a teaching on royalty. That's what we have been doing here. Amen. And I've been sharing with you that royalty, amen, you have to be born into royalty. Amen. You, royalty, you have to be born. You can't just say, well, I'm royalty. You have to be born into royalty. Amen. So in the physical, so in the spiritual. Amen. You have to have the royal blood. But we are royalty because we have the spirit of Christ. Amen. He's royalty. We are royalty. Amen. As he is, so are we. And we have to change the way we are thinking. As he is, so are we. And I've been sharing with you a few things. I said, don't think that you are nobody. You have resources. As a, as a child of God and as royalty, you have resources. Number one resource you have, we taught on this, is, is angels. Angels, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, talking about these angels that we have as resources. It's, they said they are, they are ministers, amen, the heirs of those who are of salvation. Praise God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter, four, four, chapter 1, verse 14. Got it? Hebrews 1, 14. He said, are they not all ministering spirits? Who? Angels. They're all ministering spirits. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Amen. We don't worship angels. They're here to help us. They're here, here at our command. Are you following me? And the Bible says that he encampers around. So look at Psalm 34, verse 7. Psalm 34, verse 7. We have, angels. We have resources. Amen. The angel of the Lord encampers around about them that fear him and deliver them. Amen. They are here. They are here. We're not by ourselves. You don't have to turn it. You can write this down. 2 Kings chapter 6. Amen. Chapter 6, you'll see where we talk about how the kings, the king, you can see the angels around Gehazi and Elijah. 2 Kings chapter 6, 8 through 17. Amen. Let's write it down. Let's do this a little review. Praise God. Amen. So we have resources. We have angels that encamp around about us. Amen. Praise God. Not only do we have angels of resources, we have the name of Jesus. <laughs> Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Look at 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What is he doing? He's given us royalty, the power of attorney. And this is very important. Very important. The name of Jesus. Everybody can't use that name and be effective. Only those who are born again. Amen. And, and look what I like what Paul said in Acts chapter, not Paul, but Peter. Acts chapter 3, verses 6 to 8. He's going to the gate beautiful. Look what he says. Everybody know this story, amen, that the blind man at the gate, beautiful. Look what it says. Then Peter, he, he actually was begging for, for arm, and Peter said this. Then said Peter, oh, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. And he took him by the right hand and lift him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. Amen. And he leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them to the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Peter began to use the name of Jesus. Amen. The power of attorney. Amen. We have the same ability, the same power. Amen. But, but it's the faith in that name. You can't just say, oh, Jesus. No, no. When you speak Jesus... Let me see, I'm going to speak for myself. When I use the name of Jesus, all the demons in hell tremble. Because when I say the name of Jesus, I mean business. Are you following me? 
Some people, they, 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 they back up the head. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. No, no, I don't do that. If I want to praise him, I praise him. When I speak, call that name Jesus, I mean business. Are you following me? I mean business. I don't care what it is. When I call on that name, you get a power of attorney, I mean business. That name is above every name. Every name. I shared with you before, that name was so powerful even before the cross. Are you hearing me? That name was powerful before the resurrection. That name was powerful before even blood was shed. Amen. Where did that name come from? Go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. A name that's above every name. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. He said, wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Who named him? God. <laughs> well, I thought Joseph, no, no. Joseph was instructed to name him Jesus. Are you following me? He was instructed to name him Jesus. God named Jesus. And when did he name him? When do you name your children? From the time they're born, you name them. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was God. And his name was Jesus. His name was Jesus before the world was ever created. Are you following me? So we have resources, angels, and we have resources of his name. Amen. The most powerful name in the world, Jesus. He is Lord. Amen. He is Lord. I was here last week. A lot of people... Say, well, I'm Buddhist. I believe in Buddha. Well, Buddha ain't God. He's not Lord. Only the Lord is God. And his name is Jesus. Are you following? Are you, are you following me? Yeah. Then you have some other one says, oh, I, Allah. Allah is not Lord. If he's not Lord, then he is not God. <laughs> I'm in, am I in this place by myself? Amen. Jesus is Lord. Yes, Whoever yes. Lord is, he is the owner and controller of everything. everything. And yes. his, his name is Jesus. Amen. Jesus. So when I call his name, I'm calling to the creator of the universe. And he has given me, you, all of us authority to use that name. Uh-huh. Praise God. So we look at our resources of the angels in the name. Now today, go to Acts Chapter 1, verse 4. Our third resource. This resource is the most powerful of all. Are you listening? Here's Jesus. Take it down for a minute. Here's Jesus. About 44 days, amen, about 44 days after he ruled from the dead. Amen. Amen. Now he's getting ready to go home, go back to be the father. Look what, look at, now look what Jesus is saying to his disciples. He gave me to go back to be the father. He said, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, you have heard of me by but John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from hence. Amen. Look at verse 8. eight, eight. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. He said, you shall receive power. Amen. That word power that word power is the Greek word dunamis. Amen. It's the Greek word dunamis. It means miraculous work in power, miracle work in power. Amen. Not exhaustive, but the bottom one dunamis. Miracle work in ability and strength. But look what he said. He said, don't leave yet. I told you to go through all the world and preach the gospel. He said, but don't leave yet. Are you following me? He said, you wait. You wait for the promise. He's saying, you wait for the promise. What promise is he talking about? What he had told them about 43 days ago, 44 days ago. Go to John chapter, John chapter uh, 14. This is Jesus, 14. Chapter 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. If you read your Bible, you've got a red color. You read 90% of this is written, 90, 95% is in red. This is Jesus talking. And 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, it's only recorded in the book of John. Are you following me? And who is John writing to? He's writing to those who believe, who accepted Jesus Christ. He's not writing to the Greeks. He's not writing to the Romans. Amen. He's not writing to the intellectual. He's writing to the believers. Amen. So this night, he, he tells, gives us some very important information. Amen. The most important thing up in the universe. Amen. He says, I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Hold it right there. He says, I'm going to pray to comforter. I'm going to pray to Father. He will give you another. What is another? The same. The same. He will, he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. I'm going to pray to Father. He will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Look at verse 14. I mean, verse 16. 16. 16. 16. 13. Uh, 17, 17, I'm sorry, my bad. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he that dwelleth with you, and what shall be in you. Now, let me stop right here. Let me stop right here. You have cults. Amen. They say that the Holy Spirit is a force. They try to play it down. Are you following me? Uh, it, the, Holy Spirit is a force. the Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is a being. Are you following? Go back to 16. And when I say circle, circle, amen. Go 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that, that he, see that circle, that's not, that's not a force. That's a personal pronoun. Are you following me? If, if, if my English is correct, praise God. It's a personal pronoun. He said that he may abide with you forever. Go to 17, right? Circle he, 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him, circle him, not. Neither knoweth him, circle him. For ye know him, circle him. For he, circle he, shall dwell with you and shall be in you. So the Holy Spirit is not a force. Don't let somebody tell you that it's a force. Especially if you're witnesses. They come knocking on your door. I tell them, come on in. They don't know what they stepped into. Come on in. When I finish, they don't come back no more. One time, they, a little man, they left in a hurry, and they came back with an elder. He left with a, in a hurry, and he never came back. <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> but, but they come to Christians who don't know any better, and, and Christians who don't study the Bible. And they say, well, the Holy Spirit is a force. It's not a force. The Holy Spirit was here before the world was created. Are you listening to me? Yes. The Holy Spirit, he was here. He was with the Father and the Son before anything was created. He was already here. Are you following me? And Jesus said, I'm going to send you another. I like that. I'm going to send you another that he may abide with me and shall be where? In you. So, 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 so Jesus said, don't leave yet. You wait for the Holy Spirit. It's, he's coming. He's coming. He calls them the comforter. What is the comforter? Amen. The word comforter, the word comforter is the Greek word parakletos. He says, don't leave yet. I'm going to send you another comforter. And he would mean an intercessor, a helper, a counselor, an advocate. It also means an advantage. If you can get me, if you can get, get me this scripture and amplify it, you can get this one read chapter. Uh, yeah, and amplify. That's okay. He, that's what he, he, he's a helper, intercessor, he's a counselor, an advocate. That's what it, comforter. Amen. He's called alongside the word paracletus is someone who's called alongside the help. Paracletus, the help. Cletus means to help. Para means call alongside. So we as believers, amen, we got somebody alongside of us. Wherever we go, the Holy Spirit is with us. He's not only with you, walking with you, he's also going to be in you. Are you following me? He's going to be with you and he's going to be in you. Amen. Praise God. Look at 16.7. 
John 16, 7. All right, there we go. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. I like this word expedient. Expedient that you, expedient that, that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, but if I do, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. That word expedient in the Greek means advantage. If you got a, another translation, he said, he said, it expedient that I go away. He said, you're going to have an advantage when the comforter comes. What are we talking about? We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We have an advantage. Are you following me? We have an advantage. A lot of things can attack people, but sometimes it can't attack us unless we're ignorant. Expedient means advantage. Are you following me? It means advantage. Amen. If you can find that, find that in, the, in the Amplified, John 16, verse 7. You got Amplified, Surrender? Or, or did he, he, watch this. However, I am telling you nothing but the truth. When I say it, it's profitable, expedient. He's profitable, profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. He said, because if I go not away, the comforter, the, comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the st standby will yeah. not come. You see all what he's going to do? Yeah. How many see all that? See, see, when when Holy Spirit come, that gives us an advantage. Yes. Yes. Are you following? Me? So, so, so Jesus said, "Don't leave yet. You stay right here, because what I'm going to give you is going to give you that advantage." How many know all Christians who are born again, being royal, we have an advantage because we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. We have God on the inside of us, and you can tell when you get it. I said, you can tell when you get it. Uh, I said, you can tell when you get it. You can tell when he shows up. Uh -huh. If you accept Jesus Christ, you can tell when he shows up. I was in my bedroom. I was in my bedroom. Just finished smoking a joint. And chasing with, with a Colt 45. And every morning I would watch the 700 Club. And I would hear Ben Kinslow say, if you want to be born again, if you want to be born again, say this prayer. Next day, I stop in the park, give my wife time to go to, go to work, and I smoke me a joint. You know, drink Coke 45, then I go watch 700 Club. And then call some of my women, because I had a ton of women. I was a player in New York City. Are you telling me? I was just a, had a girlfriend. Are you following me? I'm, I'm telling you what, what Jesus did for me. When, when he come, you'll know. You'll know. I said, you will know. I had so many women. The 700 Club did my life story. How many here saw that subject? Yeah. The 700 Club did my life story. This one morning, I smoked so much dope, my hands was turning brown. Y'all know anything about that. But my brand, because smoking them joints, my hair turned brown. And I became a supervisor. I'm here, here now, I'm in management. I'm ashamed to shake hands, see people see my hand. And I couldn't kick it. So this morning, I was, he said, if you want to be born again, say this prayer. So I said the prayer. Are you following me? I said the prayer. You know, I went to sleep. I didn't hear Charles the Hustle say, I am God. I heard no voice. The room didn't shake, nothing. I just went to sleep. About a week went by. I said, whoa, I ain't smoked no joy. I ain't snort no cocaine. I ain't had no gin. I ain't called none of my women. Something done happened to me. Something happened to the kid. Something happened. I said, oh, I accepted Jesus. Where I couldn't kick it before, when I got the Holy Spirit, I had an advantage. I was able to kick it. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. When I got the Holy Spirit, the comforter came in. Amen. Amen. Now I'm born again. And I have the spirit inside of me. Amen. Go back to Acts. I'm going to straighten something out right here. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Watch this. Acts chapter 1 and 4. He said, being assembled together with them, he commanded and that, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he, he said he, 
you have heard of me. Seven. For you, for John, truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and not with many days from here. Let me straight something out here. A lot of people say, oh, when you're baptized, you get baptized, you speak in tongues, and, you know, you, you, you feel the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. As soon as you accept Jesus, you are baptized in the Spirit. Are you following me? I said, as soon as you accept Jesus, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. As soon as you accept Jesus, you are baptized. He said, for by one spirit are ye baptized into one body. Everybody who accepted Jesus, amen, you are baptized. So Jesus, Jesus said, to, don't y'all leave until y'all be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Don't leave until you get the comforter. Don't leave until you get this power. Are you following me? Yes, yes. Don't leave. Don't leave. You stay right here until the, when, the, when the Holy Spirit, until the Holy Spirit comes. Stay right here. As soon as you see, when you get the Holy Spirit, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Go to Ephesians chapter, chapter 1, verse 13. We talk about the, the third resource, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom ye also salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, and ye were royalty. <laughs> he said, You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, but I put back, you were royalty. Are you following me? As soon as you heard the gospel, if you were here, you heard the gospel like I did, and I accept Jesus Christ, I was sealed. Are you following me? I was sealed. What do you mean you were sealed? I was sealed. There was, you know, God has always marked his people. He always did it. He did it with children of Israel. They always, what, had a seal. They were circumcised. But we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Every child who is royalty He's sealed. As soon as you accept Jesus Christ, you don't get a blood transfusion. You get the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit makes you royalty. You are sealed. I don't care how you think, what you say, you are sealed. Jesus said, don't go nowhere until you get sealed. Don't go nowhere until you get sealed. Stay right here. Stay right here until you get sealed. How many accept Jesus Christ? You are sealed. You are sealed. Why did he say that? Because the devil knows exactly who is sealed and who ain't sealed. I ain't gonna be long. He knows exactly who is sealed and who is not sealed. Dukes, remember we was over, I was in Ghana or Tanzania. And I was casting out this devil. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out. Come out of Jesus, them casting the devil out. And that devil, that girl, she's speaking tree, but she spoke perfect English. That devil looked at me and said, why are you bothering us? Yeah. Telling me, why are you bothering us? You know what I did? I kept on going, and I cast that devil out. Are you following me? Why are you bothering us? Yeah. Yeah. It, and they can speak, she, she spoke perfect English. She didn't speak tree, she spoke perfect English. Why are you bothering us? See, that devil, he, that devil knew. That devil knew that Dave Kenny was royalty. The same authority that Jesus has, you have. As you think, so are you. Begin to think yourself, think royalty. Think royalty. Think royalty. They know who you are. Look what happened to Jesus. Go to Mark chapter 1, verse 24. Jesus goes into the synagogue, right? And look what it says. Look what the devil says. That's to Jesus. To let us alone. Who, who have we to do 
with thee. He said, what have we to do with, do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art. The Holy Spirit, he said, we, I know who you are. I, I know who you are. I know who you are. I know who you are. Who you are. And guess what? He know who you are. He know exactly why. In the spirit realm, you're sealed. You can't see it, but in the spirit realm, he can see it. If you don't know who you are, he'll kill you before your time. If you don't know who you are, that you're a prince, you're royalty, he'll take you through hell on earth. It was a guy, I, I worked on somebody's car, my, my daughter's car, a couple days ago. And my daughter says, my old daughter Tip says, before this, she says, call, call so and so and so. I said, I've been trying to call him, but he don't answer. I don't know if he's in the van. I called him. He does good work. I said, okay. So she called him. He came out. He's working on the car. So my other daughter, the car that he was working on, she didn't have no money. So you know who got caught with the bill. Are you following me? So, <laughs> still going in your pocket. I'm a, so when I come over, I saw, I, I saw the guy, I looked at, I said, so when I come over, I saw, I, I saw the guy, I looked at, I said, I've been trying to get you where you been, man. He been tell me a story. He said, oh, oh, my kidneys. Look at here. He pulled back, and he had a tube running from the back down. His kidneys was failing. He had stage four cancer. He had hemorrhoids. You, you, by my, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And how many Christians are destroyed because they don't know who they are? The devil knew who he was because he was sealed. But he didn't know who he was. I said, he didn't know who he was. The devil know you. That's why he, he goes in church. He's trying to, trying to fool you. You are, I don't care what you hear. I don't care what you hear. Okay, who God always sealed his people. He seals us. And when the rapture takes place, during the tribulation, whoever left on earth, the 144,000, they're going to be sealed. Be called in that name Jesus. By faith in that name, you want to see, some, see those stuff start happening in your life. Just, 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 just start thinking. You have resources. The Holy Spirit, uh, he's your intercessor, he's your counselor, he's your advocate. You got it. You are royalty. You have the spirit of living God. Go to Romans chapter 8 verse 9. See, some people teach different. But look at Romans 8 9. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, capital S. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of God, Christ, he is not royalty. I put that there. <laughs> See, it said, he is not his. But I said, he is not royalty. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit can have many names. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Amen. He, 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 the, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he had many the Spirit of Christ, but it's all the same. The same. And you have that. And you are sealed. And the devil know exactly you, who you are. Oh, don't tithe. You, if you are born again, you tithe, watch the windows of heaven open up. You are born again, you are sealed, begin to pray in the name of Jesus and see what happens. Believe it. And the man being Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all things become new. Now I'm a king. I used to be a drug addict. I used to be a whoremonger. I used to fight. I used to gamble. No, no, not no more. I'm royal. Now I'm royalty. And whatever I ask God, I get it. Amen. I, 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 I'm telling you. Oh, no, Pastor, you can't, you can't believe. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Whatever I want, I know how to pray. 
I know how to pray. If I, and my wife knew how to pray. Amen. Sometimes she pray on me. That's okay. Amen. I, I, I'm still in the oven. I'm still being worked on. <laughs> How many men in the house you know what I'm talking about? Huh? She started praying. How the most sick I said, oh, Lord, I did something wrong. <laughs> am, I, am I the only one? Huh? You too, David? Oh, my God. Yeah. You, you did something wrong. Praise God. But, but that's okay. Keep praying for me. I, I need it. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm still in love. It. You, you too, Darren? <laughs> yeah, praise God. See, you know what? He knows who she is. <laughs> My husband needs to help me there, Lord. She pray for me. Amen. It'll come around in due time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He know exactly who, devils know exactly who you are. And those who don't have the spirit of Christ, they are afraid. They're afraid when you step up, when you come around. They're afraid of you. There's a story here I want to share with you. I want to share this story with you. Go to the book of Acts. You got the seal. They know you. They know exactly who you are. Before you go there, before you go there, you can tell I said, I said, you can tell, amen, you can tell if you have it. You can tell if you're sealed. Go to the book of chapter 15, verse uh, John chapter 16, 15, 26, 27. John, John chapter 15, verse 26, 27. You can tell if you had the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Hold, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it right there. Take, take it down. I'm sure, and say, say this. If a person has a lying spirit, what would that person do? Lie. Yeah. If a person has a spirit of privilege, steal it. What would they do? He'll steal. If a person has a homosexual spirit, what would they do? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, you follow what I'm saying? Whatever spirit is on you, that's how you're going to act. If a person has a religious spirit, he'd be very religious. Are you following me? Whatever spirit you have, that's how you're going to act. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, how are you going to know you have the Holy Spirit? Because this is what I do when I go overseas. Okay, what country I go into? I, I'm, I'm listening. To see what spirit's here so I can attack that spirit. Look at 15, 26, 27. Talk about it when you come. But when the Comforter is come, who's the Holy Spirit? When he is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall, number one, he will do what? Testify of me. When you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to testify. What are you going to testify? Jesus is God. Jesus is faithful. Jesus. He, he's, he's not going to testify of God. Go back. He's not going to testify of God. He's going to what is it? He will what? Testify who, of what? Of me. Jesus. 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 Now look at 27. And ye also shall bear witness, witness, witness because ye have been with who? Jesus. From the beginning. If you had the Holy Spirit, you're going to bear witness, you're going to testify. You're going to bear witness that what? He's alive. You're going to bear witness, he's a healer. Yeah. Are you he's, a, he's a deliverer. You're going to bear witness. He is faithful. He's a restorer. You'll know. You'll know. Go to 1623. 1623. How are you going to tell you got it? This is how you going to tell. John 1623. And in that day, you shall ask me... No, no, that's not it. Uh, go to 16. I got to find this one. John chapter. Uh huh. John chapter. Hold it, hold it, hold it. One, one, one second. Sixteen fourteen. 
16, 14. John 16, 14. How are you going to tell? He shall what? Glorify me. If you had the Holy Spirit, you can always praise Jesus. He's going to always get the glory. You're going to bear witness of Jesus. You're going to testify of him. And you're going to glorify him. That's all. When pe people come in here, right? We just worship it. Worship it. Why? The Holy Spirit is here. Are you following me? So we glorify him. We magnify him. We glorify him. Why? That spirit's on the inside of us. We testify him. Why? The spirit's on the inside of us. Are you following me? Amen. And the devil know you. When you walk in, they know you. I used to be on my job working downtown Brooklyn, transit headquarters. I walk in, that, I walk in my office. All of God said, I walk in there. All thing I said, Jesus and everybody in this. <laughs> yeah. Just say it, say it and mean it. Where are you at? And watch the people, don't people take notice. They take notice. They take notice. And they know who has the spirit of Christ and they know who don't have it. I'm going to close. Go to Acts chapter, thir chapter 19. They know you. They know you. They know you. Watch this. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus. Uh oh, said, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it right there. These are who? Certain vagabond Jews are going to use the name of Jesus, but they're not sealed. They're not royalty. Oh, are you following me? They're not royalty. Uh, am I in the, the, see, they, they will cast out some devils, but they're not royalty. Watch this. We adjure you, by, and, 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 there, and there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did, well, hold it right there, a religious man, but he, he wasn't sealed. He, he didn't accept Jesus. Amen. Are you following? He wasn't, he wasn't royalty. He was just a priest, a, a religious guy. In which we did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. Watch me. Watch this. Jesus I know. David Kenny I know. But who are you? <laughs> are you following me? Put your name there. Put your name there. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. Paul, I know, but who are you? Who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped upon them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> Not there wasn't sealed, there wasn't there wasn't royalty. They were not royalty. They were not sealed. You are sealed. You are royalty. And as a man thinketh in the heart, so is he. Even though you're watching and you don't believe it, but you believe it now, after eight weeks, you start speaking and acting like who you are. Know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. If you have the spirit of Christ, you belong to Jesus, and you are royalty. You have dominion. How many hear what I said today? Well, let me say this. Oh, yes. Oh, glory. I feel like casting out some devils. Hallelujah. I say glory. I say glory. Brother Kenneth, you are healed in Jesus' name. We speak healing. You are healed. Daryl, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, bless you, Lord. I said glory. If you are here today, listen to me. If you are here today, 
you never accepted Jesus Christ, you're not sealed. But you want to be sealed. Let me pray for you. Every head bow now. Every head bow. Every head, head bow. Every eye closed. Put your head down. If you are here, I'm going to pray. If you want to be born again, if you want to be sealed by the Holy Spirit, raise your hand. Let's just slide your hand up in here. Hallelujah. Will there be one today? I want to be born again. I want Jesus. I see your hand. Oh, glory. Will there be another? Oh, glory. Bless you. Now, those of you who have your hands up, everybody here who's sealed, who have accepted Jesus Christ, keep your hands up, keep your head down. Let's stand in agreement with them. And you that have your hands up, just repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, everybody. Say, Lord Jesus, I heard your word. Lord, I am a sinner. I am not saved. I am not sealed. But today I heard your word. Now, Lord, I surrender to you. Come in my heart. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus, and be the Lord of my life. And I'll serve you all days of my life. Father, I thank you, and I receive you in Jesus' name. And Father, I bring all heaven and hell and all of earth to take notice that today I make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. If you 